Hi everyone! In this video we're going to talk about amplitude and frequency of the graphs of the sine and cosine functions. And we're also going to see how graphs can be reflected over the horizontal axis. Let's start with the amplitude. Amplitude is the distance from the x-axis to a minimum point or a maximum point. I have two examples here. Let's try to determine amplitude for each. If I pick this maximum point, then the amplitude will be the distance from that point to the horizontal axis. And what is this distance? Well, I can use the vertical axis to help me. So I can see that it's going to be two units. How about the second graph? If I use this maximum point, then this is going to be the amplitude. Looks like it's 0.5. Or I can also write it as 1 half. So you probably got the idea of what the amplitude is. But where is it reflected in the function itself? Well, the amplitude will be shown in the front of the sine or cosine. So let's try to find functions that describe these two graphs. Let's do the first one. First of all, what kind of function is that? Is it sine or cosine? Remember that the easy way to identify them is by looking at the y-intercept. We can see that this graph crosses the vertical axis at 0, 2. Well, not the origin. And that means that we're looking at the graph of the cosine function. Well, if we know that, then the function should look like this. f of x equals, now amplitude, which is 2, I'm going to place in the front, and then I'm going to say cosine of x. So that would be the function describing this graph. How about the second one? We can see that for the second one, the y-intercept is at the origin, 0, 0.00. Well, that's how we identify the sine function. That means that the function itself will be f of x. Now, amplitude is 1 half, so I'm writing 1 half first, and then sine of x. So, just like that. Before we move on, I need to make one important note. Since amplitude is the distance, and we always measure distances using positive numbers, amplitude is always positive. But how about that number a in front of sine or cosine? Is it always positive? No, it's not. And we'll see when it's not positive at the end of this video. But because of the fact that number a itself can be either positive or negative, I'm going to say that amplitude is not a itself, but its absolute value of a. So that would be a mathematically correct way of denoting the amplitude. Next, we're going to talk about frequency of a graph. So frequency is the number of cycles that can fit between 0 and 2 pi. Let's use these two examples to better understand the frequency. As I look at the first graph, I can see its portion between 0 and 2 pi. But how many cycles can I fit in? Let's count. I'm going to start cycle at the origin, and that's going to be the point that we call 0. Remember, if I start cycle at 0 point, I have to skip one and stop at the third one. So that means that this is the first cycle of that graph. Well, I can keep going, right? Looks like I can fit in one more. Like that. Okay, so I was able to fit in two cycles between 0 and 2 pi. Well, that means that the frequency of this graph equals 2. How about the second example? Here the first cycle will start at the maximum point, so that means that it ends at the next maximum. So, so cycle number one, this is cycle number two, and I can see that I can fit in one more until I reach 2 pi. Okay, cycle number three. I was able to fit in three cycles between 0 and 2 pi, so that means that the frequency of this graph is 3. And then how come graphs have different frequencies? Think about this graph as a spring. You can compress the spring or you can stretch the spring. Well, that will increase or decrease the frequency. And since graphs can have different frequencies, that means their corresponding functions should look a little different. Well, and that's where frequency is reflected in a function. Frequency, which is in many resources denoted by either uppercase or lowercase b, is the number that's going to be standing in front of x in the function. So let's try to write down functions for these two graphs. 
So first of all, as we can see, the first graph crosses the vertical axis at the origin. So that means that we're looking at the graph of the sine function, and its amplitude is 1. So I'm not going to be putting anything in front of the sine. In other words, it's going to be f of x equals sine. And then since the frequency is 2, I'll have to write 2x, sine of 2x. The second graph crosses the vertical axis not at the origin. Well, in this case, it's 0 0.01. So we're looking at the graph of the cosine function. Again, amplitude is 1. So the function will look like this, f of x equals cosine. But since the frequency is 3, I'm going to write cosine of 3x, like that. But this would be the good question to ask at this point. Do we always have to count by hand how many cycles fit between 0 and 2 pi? What if we don't have a graph in front of us? Or what if it's not a whole number of cycles that fit between 0 and 2 pi, which is totally possible? It may be two full cycles and just a portion of a cycle, like one-seventh of a cycle, which it's going to be very, very hard to determine exactly by looking at the graph. The good news is that after these two examples, we're never going to determine the frequency by counting cycles of the graph. We're going to find frequency algebraically. So think this way. If frequency represents the number of cycles that can fit between 0 and 2 pi, and the length of each cycle is one period, that means that if I take that whole distance from 0 to 2 pi, which is 2 pi, and divide by one period, it will tell me how many cycles I can find there. In other words, we're going to use this little formula to calculate the frequency. Let's test it. What is the period of the first graph? Well, we identified the first cycle. Remember, to find the period, we have to take the rightmost value and subtract the leftmost value along the horizontal axis for that cycle. Well, in this case, it's going to be pi minus 0. So we get pi. Let's write this all down. So to compute the frequency algebraically, I have to take 2 pi and divide by the period. We just determined that the period of that graph is pi. So I'm going to be taking 2 pi and dividing by pi. Of course, I can divide out pi. And I get 2, which is exactly what we found when we computed frequency by hand. Let's check that for the second graph. So what is the period? Again, this is the first cycle. It goes from 0 to 2 pi over 3. So that distance is 2 pi over 3. Period is 2 pi over 3. So I take 2 pi, divide by the period, which is 2 pi over 3. This means that I will have to take 2 pi and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that's 3 over 2 pi. I'll put 2 pi over 1 to create two fractions. And before I multiply, I can divide out 2 pi here and here. That gives me 3 over 1, or just 3. And again, that confirms that we've found to be frequency when we get it by hand. And finally, let's talk about the reflection. Reflection of the sine or cosine graphs over the x-axis. Here I have two examples. Let's try to draw the reflected graphs. What does it mean to reflect the graph? Well, if I fold the paper along the horizontal axis, then the original graph and the reflected one should coincide. So in other words, if I have this, let's call it a hill, on this side of this x-axis, I'm going to have a valley on the other side of the x-axis. Like that. And please excuse my imperfect graphs. Now, if I have this valley for the original graph, once it gets reflected, there's going to be a hill that appears on the other side of the x-axis. And as I got the idea here, now I can extend the ends of the reflected graph this way. So what I have in blue is the graph that I obtained by reflecting the given graph. But what is the function that describes it? It's actually very easy because the function will look almost the same with only one difference. In the front, in other words, in the front of 5, there's going to be a negative sign. So that's where you should see the negative sign. Let's try this with the second graph. Again, we're going to start by reflecting it. Okay, so that's what I got. 
And what function should we write that describes the reflected graph? It's going to be a very similar function, but with a negative sign in, in, in front of 2. So y equals negative 2 cosine of 3x. And based on what we just talked about, we can say that we're going to know that the graph is reflected if a, which is always the number in front of sine or cosine, is negative. I already mentioned at the beginning of this video that it could be either negative or positive. But remember that amplitude is always positive. Even though in the case of this function a is negative 2, amplitude is still going to be just 2 since it's a distance, so it should stay positive. And in the first case, a is negative 5, but amplitude is 5. So amplitude is always positive. And this is one last important thing that we need to discuss here. How do we identify the reflected graphs by looking at them? Let's think. We know that the graph of the sine function always crosses the vertical axis at the origin, 0, 0. And as you can see, it's true for both reflected and non-reflected graphs. So that stays the same. But what is different? Well, we can see that when the graph is not reflected, after 0, 0, it goes up. In other words, it's increasing. And if it's reflected, then after the origin, it's going to be decreasing. It's going to be going down. That would be one of the easy ways to identify the reflected sine function. So make a note of that. The reflected graph will be decreasing. We know that the cosine graph does not cross the vertical axis at zero, at zero, zero. It crosses it somewhere else. Well, the non-reflected graph crossed it at zero, two, but the reflected graph crossed it at zero, negative two. And that's something we can generalize. We can say that reflected cosine graphs will have negative y-intercepts. So make a note of that as well. So we learned all important features of sine and cosine graphs. And in the next video, we're going to do one example where we're going to put all that together into practice.